preludes as opposed to etudes are basically could be anything. They were initially prelude meaning before playing, so it would come before the main event. But starting with Chopin and later other composers, it became a piece, a short piece on its own, self-contained. And some of the Rachmaninoff preludes are extremely famous, like the, fa like the Bell of Moscow and the G minor one. They're known standalone pieces. But what I found really fascinating is to see the 24 as a cycle. Why 24? There are 24 keys, so all the major and minor keys with 12 keys give you 24 uh, options. And Rachmaninoff wrote the 24, and this is also quite unique, not in one go, like most composers like Chopin or, or Scriabin. He wrote them over a period of over 15 years. The first prelude, the C sharp minor one, Bell of Moscow, is a very early work. Then came the 10 preludes, Opus 23. They are deeply romantic, lush textures, um, flowing melodies. And the last part, Opus 32, came almost 10 years later, and they are completely different in mood and also in the way of writing for the piano. They're much closer to modernity. The textures are leaner, the music is more muscular, drier, the writing is more transparent. The variety of writing and ideas is staggering. It's such a treasure of riches. And as a finishing touch, he, com he drew a parallel between number one and number 24, the opening and the closing. It's a C sharp ma minor and D flat major, so the same key, just in minor and major. And the main motive of the first prelude comes back in the last as a triumphant, victorious gesture. It's, it's quite beautiful and it shows the development of Rachmaninoff as a composer apart from anything else. We often think of his language as being immutable, the same from the beginning until the end of his life. And it's true that the harmonic language and the melodic talent was always with him, but we can also see that he did progress and change a lot during, during his life.